Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress. I have to tell you about two new kids on the block, two young Russian grandmasters who will challenge for the top positions in chess in a few years time, if not sooner. They are Daniel Dubov from Moscow, 21 years old, and Vladimir Fedoseya from St. Petersburg, 22 years old. In the recent 2017 World Cup, Dubov beat Sergei Karyakin, last year's World Championship challenger, and Fedoseyev beat Hikaru Nakamura. And I want to show you the game Fedoseyev Nakamura, the second game from the third round, the round of 32 in the 2017 World Cup. Let's get into it. Fedoseyev was white, Nakamura was black, a Russia USA clash, and it was played on the 10th of September 2017. E4 from Fedoseyev, Nakamura played E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Knight C3, and Knight F6, the old reliable four knights game. Bishop B5, and Nakamura played Knight D4, which is a solid option for black if he knows what he's doing, and Nakamura knows what he's doing. Bishop C4 from Fedoseyev, you can also take the pawn immediately, but White saves his bishop pair first. Bishop c5 and d3. Again you can take the pawn on e5 instead and then queen e7 is the best move and after knight f3 black plays d5. That's a variation but in this case Fedoseyev played d3. And now Nakamura sacrifices a pawn. He played c6 which is a bad pawn sacrifice. The solid move here is d6. Fedeseyev took the pawn. We're only on, the move, on move 7 and black already gives up a pawn. Nakamura castled and here Fedeseyev took his chance. He took on f7. Rook takes, bishop takes, king takes. White has rook and two pawns for bishop and knight. We're nine moves into the game and the position is already crazy. Imbalanced material always gives an interesting fight. Bishop e3 from Fedoseyev and knight e6. Commentator said that d6 here was the better move. Fedoseyev took on c5, knight takes and now e5. That move is possible because Black did not play the pawn to d6. Knight back to e8. Black is pushed back. d4. Knight e6. Fedoseyev castled. d6. f4. White keeps going forward. d takes. f takes check. King g8. And d5. After the game, Fedoseyev said that Queen h5 is even stronger, and if then black takes on d4 with check, there is rook f2, then g6 to prevent the queen coming to f7, but after queen f3, white threatens to win a piece with queen f7, white is better here. But in the game Fedosev played d5, also a good move, Nakamura took, knight takes back, Knight a to c7, c4, bishop d7, queen g4, knight f8, queen f3, and knight g6. Black cannot play bishop e6 protecting the f7 square because then white is a very strong, this is a nice variation. Queen takes f8 check, queen takes, rook takes check, rook takes, Knight takes c7, bishop takes c4, and then white wins with e6. That pawn is supported by the knight, and the pawn is so strong it will cost black his bishop. So bishop e6 was not played, knight g6 was played by Nakamura. Rook a d1 from Fedoseyev, knight e6, and h4, very strong. 
White needs to get, get rid of the knight on g6 before infiltrating with his queen. If he comes in with the queen straight away, queen f7 check, then there is king h8. And if you then play knight f6, like in the game, then there is knight takes e5 and the tables are turned. Black is winning material here. Knight e5 is attacking the queen, protecting bishop d7. Black is winning. Fedoseyev played h4 to get rid of that knight first. Nakamura took, and there comes queen f7 check. King goes in the corner, and now knight f6 does work. If you take the knight, then there is rook takes d7. Queen g8 is the only move, threatening mate on g2, but then queen takes f6 check, wins the game for white. Knight g7, queen takes h4, and white is winning. So after knight f6, Nakamura played queen b6 check, rook f2, and bishop a4 hitting the rook. Black has removed his attacked pieces from the d-file with a tempo. The rook went to d6, knight g5, queen e7, knight f5, and now Fedoseyev transposes into a good ending for him. He took on b6, knight takes e7, rook takes b7, knight g6, knight h5 attacking the g7 pawn, knight e6 defending that pawn, and rook f f7. Two rooks on the seventh rank is often very powerful. Here Nakamura missed a chance, he could have played bishop d1, hitting the knight, and you cannot take on g7, because if you take on g7 there is knight d8, rook takes a7, knight takes f7, rook takes a8 check, and king takes g7. White has a rook and four pawns against three light pieces. Crazy material imbalance, but the position is about equal. So after bishop d1, instead of knight takes g7, white should play knight g3, and then is better, he keeps an advantage. Nakamura did not play bishop d1, he played bishop e8 the other way, attacking the rook. Fedoseyev took on a7, rook d8, rook back to f1, and king g8. You cannot take that pawn on e5, because then there is knight takes g7, and if you take that knight, there is rook f8 checkmate. So king g8 was played by Nakamura, knight g3, h5, knight f5, king h7, b4. Fedoseyev starts to run with his passed pawns, h4 and b5. Rook d2, black tries to get active, but now his bishop on e8 will get into trouble. Knight d6, strong move. There's no way back for the rook, and the bishop on a8 has no safe squares. All the squares the bishop can go to are controlled by white, and the bishop on e8 is attacked by the knight on d6. h3 from Nakamura. That pawn was taken. Bishop d7. Rook takes and knight g5. You can still not take on e5 because then there is rook e7 and both knights are lined up. If you play rook takes d6 then there is c5 and white has a winning advantage. After knight g5 Fedoseyev played, played rook f5 attacking the knight. Knight went to h4 and again you cannot take on e5 because of rook takes g7 check. White should not take on e5 because then there is knight f3 check with a fork. And the same happens if he had taken on g5 then knight f3 check is a fork. 
which saves the game for black. After, let's get back to this variation, we just played rook f5, as in the game, and I said you cannot take on e5, and that is because of rook takes g7 check. Because if you take that rook, then there is rook takes g5 check, and after king f6, white has the beautiful move, knight e4 check. Protecting the rook, giving check, and it's also a fork, the rook on d2 will fall and the rook on g5 will stay alive. Very nice move, knight e4 check. Anyway, back to the game. After rook f5, Nakamura played knight h4, but now also white can win the game before black can get a counterplay against white's king with its three pieces. Rook takes g7, check was the last move of the game. Nakamura resigned and Fedoseyev went on to the last 16 of the 27 World Cup. If you take with the king, then there is rook takes g5, check, and white is five pawns up in this endgame. Big win for Fedoseyev, who even went on to the quarterfinals, where he was stopped by Wesley So. But remember that name, Vladimir Fedoseyev. We will hear a lot more from him, as well as from Daniel Dubov, who, as I said, beat Sergei Karyakin in this tournament. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment. And if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.